that kind of stepping in because he was available. Uh, we're still waiting on the Senate and Senate minority. Yeah, yeah, still waiting. Yep. You're welcome.
someone else. They, they work with that together. Jim's camera doesn't look that good. <laughs> no, well, every time they send it, it's all compressed like the living daylights out of it. Ah, because they put in that stupid power plant. <laughs> That's why it's compressed. No, but even when it's full screen, it's com it looks compressed. Yeah, but it's still going through the power plant. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You said the paper was another unusual event. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, uh, we all ready? Yep. All right. I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, pretty sobering and tough report from the Attorney General. Uh, the facts are even worse than I think most of our conference and a lot of people uh, thought they were. Uh, it confirms a toxic and hostile work environment. It confirms that the governor's office uh, violated state and federal laws. Uh, it confirms that at least 11 women were harassed by this governor, violating those laws. You know, that was the process these laws were violated, including a state trooper. It confirms the governor's staff facilitated the culture, the harassment, the intimidation, the fear. The only thing that was missing, I mean, 74,000 pieces of documentation, over a hundred witnesses, eleven women, and yet the governor uh, seemed to challenge the facts and the very basis of the report in his response. No real ownership, certainly no contrition, and he does not seem to be resigning. And so I think the question for a lot of people is going to turn to, okay, this seems pretty bad, this seems very serious. He violated state and federal laws. So now what? what? Who is holding him accountable for those violations? The Attorney General did not, I did not um, hear that there was any criminal referral or referral to any other prosecutorial agency. And to be clear, these 11 women, reading this investigation, and I've gone through the bulk of it, but not the entire thing page by page, but going through it, they attempted to raise this through the chain of command. And this is, I think, very, very important when we talk about things like sexual harassment or hostile work environment. They brought this to their superiors. Their superiors not only did nothing, but actively snuffed this out, actively worked to kill the claims, moving employees, 
silencing those employees, intimidating those women, retaliating against those women. So then those women, what did they do? They had the courage, the intestinal fortitude, they brought it to the press. They brought it to the Attorney General. Now what? Now those women and the people of New York, after seeing their courage, their bravery, they deserve to see the same thing from their elected leaders, particularly at this moment, the Senate are, and Assembly Democrats. The Assembly Democrats should immediately move forward with impeachment proceedings based on this report. Our conference stands ready to come back immediately to deal with this. There is no CEO in New York State, or for that matter, I believe in America, that would still be the CEO if a report like this came out about their work environment and actions against them. There is no school superintendent that would still be the school superintendent if there was a report like this against them. So the question is, if the state legislature is not going to hold this governor accountable, then who is? And, and, and I don't want to see, you're going to get a lot of, in your inboxes, letter, you know, press releases calling on him to resign immediately, press, press releases calling on him to step down, do the right thing. We've already had those. Our conference unanimously called on him to resign. In fact, many of my colleagues across the aisle called on him to resign, and yet they continued to appear with him in public at press conferences and normalize his behavior, and it was all, all, almost all forgotten. Now some of those same folks are saying he should resign. We're past the, the press releases and the tweets calling on him to resign. People of New York and these women deserve and demand action. That is what we're calling on the New York State Assembly to move forward with those articles of impeachment, bring it to the, for, as a trial for the Senate, and our conference will be back and is ready to come back immediately. How much of the 168 pages, if any, have you been able to get through? And if not, when are you planning to go through that? Yeah, I, I've been through uh, the entire executive summary. I've re, uh, you know, read through um, some of the uh, uh, you know, individual uh, uh, of the 11 women individual you know, allegations that they made and the findings from those uh, cases as well as the conclusions. So I have looked at the report, I have read the report, our staff has gone through the report and briefed me. Uh, but again, I think the key takeaways there, 74,000 pieces of documentation, 11 women, over 100 witnesses, uh, and the Attorney General, her press, you know, her conference today, I think pretty much laid out the conclusion of the report. The only thing, again, that was missing was, okay, so what now? What becomes of a governor who has lost, to me, all the moral and political uh, authority to lead when it's basically acknowledged by the, the top lawyer in the state, a person of his own party, that he violated state and federal laws, that he violated practices and protocols that were in place, uh, you know, protocols of his own office. So, so what was the most shocking piece of the report for you? I think, for me, the most, the most shocking, um, in some regard, you know, there's, there are several pieces. I wish there was only one. I, I would say the, the state trooper, that was someone that I, we had never heard of, right? A lot of these women had come forward, and we had sort of become familiar with some of these women uh, who had the bravery to come forward, you know, through, through the press and uh, had the bravery to step forward and talk to the AG. But to try and get a female trooper on your detail, despite not maybe having the, the background or whatever to be on the detail, but to try to get that person on your detail solely for the purposes of what? Solely for the purposes of having them near you? Um, solely for the purposes of, of what? I think it belies the question. You know, it's, it's rare to me that a governor would select their own security detail. That's for the superintendent of state police, right? They find those people and, and based on background and such. So that was, um, that was pretty, pretty unbelievable. I think the, the volume, though, I mean, this was not, there was, I think, a big concern that this might turn into a he said, she said report, right? There'd be some claims, but there wouldn't be a lot to back up those claims. There is a lot to back up these claims. And I think the fact that the staff played a critical role in snuffing out, so it wasn't like it wasn't brought to them, it was brought to them. And there was an office 
that was supposed, an HR office effectively, that was supposed to, they were supposed to protect these women. And instead, they protected the governor. Senator, um, you know, Democrats in the you know, months and weeks after the initial allegations were appearing with the governor in public. Mm -hmm. If something like that happens now with all of the details of this report laid out, what, what would you make of that? I mean, should Democrats be, be publicly shunning the governor at this point? I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how you couldn't. Uh, and if they're not willing to do that, then I think that says a lot about that individual. Right, so I, I can't speak. I'm sure there will be people that, that will not appear with him in public. Um, I was surprised there were folks, again, those who called on him to resign. Now, if you don't think he should resign, and you think he's doing a great job and, and he should stay, then I guess by that logic, you would be okay with appearing with him in public. But for people who have said, you should resign, I don't think you should be the governor of the state of New York. And then to turn around and be with them, you know, publicly, uh, even yucking it up or whatever, or, or chastising reporters who question them for appearing, I think just, what are you doing? Maybe you don't understand your job. This is a hard job. Sometimes you've got to hold people of your own party, powerful people accountable, um, and, and you're not doing it that way. And clearly the governor doesn't seem to think to me, that he doesn't seem afraid of the state legislature. He's not going anywhere. I think he's throwing the gauntlet down saying, you know, you're going to have to impeach me, which he said a few months ago, effectively, that you're going to have to remove me. I'm not going anywhere. And his statement today, I think, you know, should, should dispel anyone of the notion that he's going to go voluntarily. So I would be, be stunned for members of the state legislature of either party to continue to appear with the governor, normalizing his administration. And again, in the state assembly, they don't have to send out press releases saying resign. They actually can do something about it immediately, and they should. We just talked to Phil Steck, who is on the Judiciary Committee, and he said that there are other potentially impeachable offense, offenses that need to be considered concerning nursing homes, mm -hmm. so that could actually slow up this process. Is that valid? Should they, are they jumping the gun if they just impeach the governor based on this? No, because, because the result is the same. Right? You impeach someone, it goes to the Senate. If they're removed from office, just because there are worse things or other things, I don't say worse things, but other bad things coming, that doesn't mean that they, we, let's wait till we find out just how bad this person is completely, and then we'll decide if they should be removed from office. That that's sort of is a silly argument to me or a ridiculous argument. You have evidence that they, you know, uh, when a prosecutor finds evidence of wrongdoing, they can bring an indictment. They can amend that indictment to include further charges down the road, but you don't say, let's let this person continue in the public or in the community until we know all the things they've done. That just seems kind of a ridiculous statement. I think maybe it is more of an excuse to not move forward, to not take action. Also, up to this point, all of the GOP hopefuls for governor have expected that Andrew Cuomo is going to be the person they face in the general if they win the nomination. At this point, from your perspective, is that a realistic assumption that he'll be the Democratic nominee? You know, Dale, that, that, that's a tough question for me to answer. Um, I, um, my assumption has been, listening to his comments, he's out fundraising. He's been out in the public. He's been defiant about the investigation, about even the allegations. And you look at his statement today, it didn't look to me like someone who isn't running or trying to find a path to a fourth term. So I think it would be, uh, I, I just have not seen evidence that he, you know, is contrite and is saying, I'm not going to run for re-election or, or, you know, um, I'm going to resign. So everything I've seen, no matter what the words are, everything I've seen is someone who appears to be committed to running for a fourth term. Now again, there could be a primary, there could be a lot of things that happen on that path to whether he's the actual nominee, but I think uh, at this point, uh, I think in a lot of the Republican candidates, um, yeah, you're, you're running against Andrew Cuomo. He's the governor. He says he's running for re-election, and this, you know, if he does, this is going to be a referendum on the governor. Do you think he has the moral and political authority to continue to lead? And again, by that time, who knows what other things may come out. There's other investigations that are pending, and uh, I think we're all aware of that.
Great. Thank Thanks, you Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for coming over. Well, oh, that's all right. I would have held that for him. Oh, I was close. Oh, no, no, no.